Sean Joyce here for Cyber in 60, and today I have the pleasure to be with best-selling author and renowned futurist Peter Singer. Welcome, Peter. Thanks for having me. All right. Hey, first question. What is a big development in the next five years that you think will have a major impact on your life? Wow. Um, I'm going to have to go with AI. Uh, and the simple fact of it is we are living through a moment that humans have been talking about for literally thousands of years. I mean, you can find discussions of AI and everything from ancient Greek mythology. Now, they didn't call it that. They called it, you know, Talos or old Judaic texts, right. golems, or if you're a sci-fi fan, we've been talking about it for over 100 years. And it's happening now in our lifetime. And particularly over the next five years, when you see, you know, what might happen in application and everything from work to home to obviously enough cybersecurity. I mean, it's just game changing. A little bit scary too, obviously. And obviously big changes in probably healthcare, biotech, right? I think the biggest um, issue is not simply the application, but as it becomes more and more of a black box to us, uh, the idea that we will have outcomes, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in business, whether it's in security questions, where not only we don't understand why they happen that way, but potentially the machine won't be able to communicate it in a way that we can understand. That's awesome and awesomely <laughs> scary, right? I, I would agree because we already sort of have that with algorithms that are not leveraging AI, right? It's it's where you get into other bias in the algorithms, et cetera. Now you have AI, which is taking that to a whole different level, creating neural networks, which you said is gonna be incredibly complex and difficult to explain. Well, just think about in, in the cyber field itself. We have on the threat side, AI applied to everything from generating malware and numbers and scale that you know would have been mind boggling just a couple years back to moving over to the mis and disinformation side. You've got deep fakes and increasingly difficult for a human to figure out what is real or not. Oh, by the way, the defense is using AI. When you think about um, threat intelligence and how much of that is just applying algorithms. Um, so the field itself is being reshaped by it. Right, and I'm hoping the defense can go ahead in the AI before the adversary. And, and it may well if we do it right, because if you, AI, you know, simply put, the more data, the better. Right. And the defense can cooperate in a way, can share information across businesses, across sectors, across governments, in a way the threat actor can't. Now, that's, that's not a tech question, right? That's, right. A, that's a policy, yep. that's a bureaucratic right. question, but you know, our AI should be better than the bad, guy, the bad guy's <laughs> AI. Should, doesn't mean it will be. Right. All right, next question. You are very well known for how to actually bring storytelling into a, I would say, a situation. And we have many CISOs, and one of the prime challenges they have is actually talking to the board in a way that it resonates with the board. If you had to give one piece of advice to CISOs when they go to the board, what would it be? Facts and figures are not enough. You need to wrap it within a narrative. What is the story that you are trying to tell them? And story means characters, setting. What is the emotion that I'm trying to provoke? What's the tiny detail that's gonna sell it? If you can take those facts and figures and wrap them within that narrative, you are far more likely to achieve the effect that you want. So how do you do that though? where you're saying you're bringing that, all those things you wrap around the facts and figures, how are you doing that in an effective way where the board is, is saying, hey, Sean, I don't wanna hear a fairy tale. Tell me about what I need to know and what do I need to get that info? So you can draw inspiration from the real world. So it might be, here is a situation that another company faced and that is why we need to do X to keep us from having the same situation. Or it might be um, moving them into a different time setting. So this is what it will be like for us 
after a ransomware attack, which is why we need to do X, Y, and Z. It's a little bit of a parallel to the um, war gaming side, what we call tabletop. I mean, what you're doing right there is trying to put someone within a story, within a setting, and make them feel the effects of it. It might be to change the perspective to a different person, okay? not why you, the CEO, should care, but this is what this is, these facts and figures are gonna feel like to your customer, to your partner, or this is the um, report that um, an investment house is gonna write on you in this situation. So again, you can change the angle, um, be it time, be it setting, be it um, the person, the character, right. to achieve that effect that you want. You know, so those are great examples. Same facts and figures, really, but from a different perspective is you, re, you kind of refer to it as a different setting. All right, so I'm not a good storyteller. I am not a novelist like you, all right? If you had to give me three tips and everyone listening out there, those CISOs out there, of how to sort of start thinking like you seem to do naturally, what would it be? Um, know your audience. So there's a idea in Hollywood that um, they call it the four quadrant. You're Hollywood. No, no, I'm not. It's called, it's the, the ideal movie in Hollywood is the, it's the four quadrant. It's the yeah. movie that is of appeal to teenagers on dates, um, young men, you know, looking for an action movie, a comedy, and it also wins an Oscar. Yeah. It does not exist. It literally can't <laughs> exist. And so you can't have a story that is going to be universal. So one, who is my audience? Who am I really trying to influence? What do they care about? Second issue would be um, thinking about character. Every story has someone in it. There's a hero and there's an adversary and they have to be worthwhile. They have to make us care. So why do I care about that story? Um, and then finally would be the power of a small detail. Um, it's the difference between saying, okay, we're in the boardroom versus we're in the boardroom um, after a ransomware attack and it's 11 uh, p.m. on a Saturday and guess what? The air conditioner didn't come on because they didn't think we'd be in the building here. We just painted a scene which made us go, okay, now, I, now I'm, I'm into it. So those would be three things real rapidly I would try and do. All right, because I actually thought you would tell me one of your best sellers was actually going to be a movie. Is that coming? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Who knows? You're a guy who works with <laughs> secrets. I can't share everything on, on your video. All right, listen, it's been a pleasure having you. Thanks so much. And that is Cyber in 60.